here with us today. We welcome you to join us in worship this morning. We love you, Lord. We're here to see you, to meet with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, church, let's worship. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Sing it out. Ooh. Great is your faithfulness 
From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. And great is your faithfulness to me. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of
good God. We can trust in him. He's faithful. I mean, he laid it all down on the cross for us. He's that faithful. His love, we can't even fathom it so much. Father, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise today. There is nothing else in this world that's better. All we need is you, Jesus. We love you.
Amen. All right, there we go. Man, this song is about God being the God of turnaround. You know, no matter, no matter where you're at in life, you know what I mean? You could be as rich as anybody in the whole world. You could be as poor as anybody in the whole world. There's things that just happen in your life where you need the Lord and you need Him to turn things around. You could be, have all the money in the world, but if you're going to hell, guess what? You need to turn around. You need to get born again. You need Jesus at the center of your life. Amen. There's things and there's things that God can get to you. There's things that God can do on the inside of you. And he's the only one who can. It's amazing what happens when we get our focus and our heart dedicated to him. When we get that that alignment that happens. When we align with him, it's the power of yes. When we, when we line up with him, it is amazing what we can see happen. But I just want us, do you realize to get a miracle, you need a big mess? I just want to see God do miracles. You don't know exactly what you might be asking for. <laughs> Lord, I want to see you do miracles. Well, the qualification of that is this. All hell just took over your life, and and there is no more hope. And the only thing that could get this turned around is God to come in and to supernaturally intervene and to do something the medical science says can't happen, the economics say that can't happen. Come on, somebody. Your friends say can't happen, but God shows up. But how many know he is that God even before you have that mess? And what's even better than getting into a place where you need a miracle is letting God be the God of victory in your life, amen, and helping you to make decision by decision in your life. Helping, he'll sow, he'll show you where to sow seed, and he'll show you how to reap, and he'll show you how to take your thoughts captive, amen. And then if it just does happen, you know, Peter did everything right, and he found himself in the middle of prison. This story is just the coolest story to me. They're going to kill him in the morning. And he is at so much peace that an angel comes to deliver him and has to kick him in the side to wake him up. I don't know about you, man. Something stirs in the house, I'm awake. You know what I mean? Something goes on, you know, whatever. I don't know about you, but... I've been in the presence of spirits, you know. I've been in the presence of demons. I've been in the presence of angels. I've had the Holy Spirit show up in ways that just really, met, I mean, just really, really cool. I have seen Jesus more than once, and I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what. Something happens on the inside of you. I can't imagine an angel showing up into that room, and Peter's still sleeping. Oh. Then he's like, what, 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 what? And the angel delivered him out of what Satan brought into his life because he was doing everything right. Mm. The key to this story is this. I don't care what they do. They can take everything from me. They can throw me in prison and kill me tomorrow. I'm resting in Jesus. They kill me. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Praise God, I get to be in heaven. You know what I mean? That was Peter's attitude. You know what I mean? Woo. Come on. And yet the angel says, you ain't done, so I got to get you delivered from here. You know what I mean? And the Lord comes and does something for him. I don't know what you're dealing with today. But the answer is, Jesus, Jesus. You are the God of the turnaround. You make mountains tremble. You just make graves into gardens. You do all these things. And when we can get our mind there, the Bible says in Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. Mm. Come on, somebody. How much more can the Lord do through us 
if we'll just rest in him and let him be God. Amen? Awesome. You're gonna get, it's going to be good today. I'm just telling you that right now. So why don't you shake hands with somebody, tell them how cool they are, and tell them they're blessed, and get ready. Amen. All right, good deal. Well, welcome, everybody. And, uh, boy, I tell you what I'm excited about today. And, you know, I, I was listening to Pastor Mark while we were gone, and I was listening to Pastor Mark preach, and I'm going, come on. If I'm, I'm, I'm going to pipe in next time just so you hear my voice. And I'm going, you know, because you were all a little bit too quiet, man. I was like, come on, preach it, brother. Amen. It was good. And he had a great flow going, and I asked him to continue that today, to pick up where he left off and just to, to pick up on that thought. And he gave me permission to intervene, or not intervene, but to interject, <laughs> interject, intervene, in case he really blows it. I'll be, I'll be up here to save the day. No, um, and, and so you might hear me, okay, because he invited me to do that. So, and Pastor Mark, this is Pastor Mark and I's favorite thing to do is we just sit around, we talk about what the Word says, and we dialogue about it and stuff like this. It's just really awesome. But Pastor Mark, come on up, and uh, he's got a great word for us today. I'm excited about it. Thank you, thank you. Lord, we just thank you, the gift yes. that you placed in Pastor Mark. Yes. We thank you that you've given him years of experience. Yeah. You've given him thank a you, knowledge Lord. in the Word. And, Lord, we just appreciate that. We thank you for the gifting that you've placed on his life to be able to communicate that truth. And we thank you that it finds freedom here today. Amen. I thank you that you've given us ears that can hear and Amen. eyes that can see and hearts to perceive your Amen. truth. We open thank up our Lord. hearts to your spirit, to your Amen. realm, to your kingdom. Lord, help Amen. us to flow in the fullness of your kingdom today. Amen. We thank you for these things in the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because of who he is yes. and what he has done for Amen. us, we can say amen. In other words, amen. let it be so. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. This is going to be a good day. Amen. It's pretty comforting when I know that if I mess it up, he's going to bail me out. So I, I, have, I have no fear. This is going to be a good day. I can't fail today. I can't fail because I'll just be dragged off if anything goes wrong here. But that's all right. I'll tackle you. Yeah. But anyway, I am excited about teaching again because we're going to continue where we were last week. As, as If you were here last week, you know that I probably didn't I know I didn't teach what was on these on my notes because I don't know it was just a good thing. It was God was doing things. It's not that this is not good bad. I mean my notes when I when I put those together, I know God's there, but God can do anything, and the Holy Spirit is going to speak depending on the crowd that we have here. And so I'm excited again for today. We're going to continue on the benefits of the cross, and uh, so this is healing again. Again, our foundational scripture we started. Way back in April, I believe it was, that we started Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Aren't you glad he does that? Yeah. And the most greatest miracle in the world is that our, forgiven, that our sins are forgiven. Yeah. And we didn't have to do anything but just believe. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. Same way with the next one. And he heals all our diseases. How many? Oh. All our diseases. You know, this is so important. And it's a passion of mine, I think, to, to to teach this for this reason. When Jesus came to this earth, he healed all. And if the Son of God coming to earth needs to heal, he was healing people, why not today? When, the, when, the, when Jesus went up, he said, greater works you will do than what I've done because you're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit and people need healing. And we live in a world today, people need healing. And people need to see the power of God manifested in the world. You know something? Satan's out there doing things and showing himself strong in some places. We have a bigger, we, we have a bigger God. Greater is he who is in, what? In in, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Okay? When we look at the world, some of you think, man, there's a lot of bad things going on. Hey, that's, we knew that was going to happen. But we've got something greater than what the world has. And it's inside us. It is inside us. And it's got to come out. You say it has to come out. The world has to see a church that has the power of Jesus in their lives. That's you. 
Okay, that's not Pastor Paul and the, and the pastors and the people. That's you. We're here to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Okay, and so it's important that we grab a hold of this teaching here, this, the benefits. He forgives all our iniquities and he heals all of our diseases. Today, I want to continue this for this reason. This is what I wrote down here. I want to make such an overwhelming case for divine healing that it's going to be hard for you not to believe. Come on. Bring it. So it's going to be hard. Do you know something? There are so many proofs in the Bible. There's not one scripture. There's hundreds of scriptures. Okay, and the church, as by and large, has ignored those scriptures because we just didn't understand it. We didn't want to, we didn't want to deal with it. Right. But it is so overwhelming, the, the case for divine healing, that it's, we just need to, 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 un, to not believe. It's going to be harder to not believe than to have faith. That's what I want you to get to. Okay, so last week and the weeks before when Pastor taught, we talked about healing in the atonement. You all know what the atonement is. Jesus coming dying on the cross for our sins. We talked about that. I just, I don't want to go into that in depth today, but Isaiah 53, again, the chapter talking about Jesus said he is the one who bore our griefs, which means sickness, and he carried our pain, our sorrows. It also says in the same passage, by his stripes, we are healed. Okay. If you have any question about what that all meant, Matthew interpreted for you saying the same thing. When Jesus healed and the days that he was walking this earth, when he healed, Matthew says he did that to fulfill Isaiah. Right. To fulfill what was prophesied, Jesus did that, which means he did that to take care of, to heal our physical bodies, okay? Not just, yes, we need emotional healing. Yes, we for sure need spiritual healing, but we need physical healing, okay? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We glorify God when our bodies are healthy and whole. Right. Okay. And so we need to grab onto this teaching. And Jesus came, walked this earth. And the Bible says, Acts 10, 38, who came. Boy, now, how's that go, Pastor? <laughs> Acts 10, 38. Well, how God anointed Jesus, Jesus. With the Holy Spirit, power. power. Uh, doing good. good. Healing all of the uh, of God. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> he went around doing good. Pastor Paul got doing good. Doing good. Yes. Okay. Is healing good? Okay, so sickness is not good. No. Okay, why would we want something that is not good right. in our life? Okay, let's get rid of what's not good, and sickness is not good, just like sin is not good. Hate it as much as you hate sin in your life. Yeah. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Where does sickness come from? No. There you go. Love it. Jesse, it comes from the devil. We don't want anything of the devil in our lives, right? So we don't want to even allow it. I don't care if it's a cold. I don't care if, it's a, if you hurt your toe. I don't care. We don't want it in our body. Start working towards health and healing and start believing. And I, Pastor and I were talking this morning. I really believe this, and we, we agree to them this. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's gifts of healing. I mean, you got to know healings for today because they gave the Holy Spirit and he gave you gifts, plural, of healing. But I believe those are primarily for the unsaved people. Right. I believe for the, for the body of Christ, the children of God, we are called not to go from one healing line to the next healing line to the next healing line, but we should walk in in divine health so that we could be the one praying at the healing line. Come on. We should be the ones. All right. Because that is what God has put in us. So healing is in the atonement. Receiving healing is just as easy as receiving forgiveness because it all happened at the same time. That was all last week. Jesus even had trouble, though, uh, bringing health and healing to some people because of, in his own hometown, it says that he could do no mighty works. And he marveled, which means he was amazed at their unbelief. Again, unbelief being the number one reason why healing isn't evident in our lives. It's because of unbelief. Unbelief, the Bible talks about an evil heart of unbelief. We were talking about this this morning. Unbelief could be just something that's stuck in your head, though, okay? I'm not saying it's always like it's an evil heart, but if you, if you have unbelief in this area of healing, there's something that you don't believe in what Jesus did for you, and you need to take care of it. And we should be on a journey in our lives to make sure that any unbelief is driven out. And it only gets driven out through the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. hearing, and hearing by what? The news at 6 o'clock news? Nope, nope. Hearing doesn't know. It comes by 
the Word of God. The Word of God needs to be number one in your life. Okay, so, what is it? Proverbs 4. Boy, a lot of these scriptures are coming to mind. 20. Okay, my son, give attention to my word. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Come on. You got to memorize that one because it is life to those who find it in health to all their flesh. That's walking in divine health when you've got the Word of God so close to you that you can't get it out of your mind. You can't get it out from your heart. I was telling my wife this week, I want to start. There's another scripture I ran across this week, Psalm 92. It talks about bearing fruit in old age. Okay, that one applies to me now. I'm getting close. I'm not quite there yet. All right. But it says you will flourish like a cedar, like a palm tree. You'll be strong like the cedars of Lebanon. It says, and in your old age, you will bear fruit. You will flourish. I love that scripture yeah. as I get older. Guess what? That one's going to go someplace in my house where I see it hey. every day so it does not depart from my eyes so I can keep it in the midst of my heart, okay? And so that's, what, that's how it comes about. You got to get it in there. Okay, so unbelief, we got to drive it out. Some of the roots of unbelief, we talked about them before. One of them was um, pastor talked about, I can't even remember what it was now. I don't write it down. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. Forget your message. <laughs> yeah. Go, come on. There he is. Come on up. Yeah. This is good. I love where this is going. I'm yep. just going to set a preface. So don't don't okay. lose your thought. You're going to be able to retain your thought. Sure, I am. Okay. Because all of this is very, 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 very true. But just because you're not there does not make you evil, bad, or unloved by God. And you have to understand that in all of our lives, we end up, we end up getting hardness of heart yep. because we're in this world. You know, and um, I'm, I'm dealing and helping somebody right now live that has cancer all through her body and all this other kind of stuff. And unfortunately, her husband died of cancer as well. Mm -hmm. And they have seen miracles in the past, and they have seen people healed and things like this, but... She has hardness of heart, not evil. It's not, she isn't evil, but unbelief is evil. The Bible calls unbelief evil, but there's, unbelief comes from so many things. It comes from our experiences. It comes from the people we hang out with. It comes from all these. And so, but how do you get rid of that unbelief, that evil heart of unbelief? Like I said, it doesn't make you evil. It's just, this is the thing. Until we're thinking just like Jesus and we're accepting him for who he is, in the pureness of heaven, that's called mm -hmm. evil. Yeah. And so we have this battle in this world that we live in and in this life that we have to approach from a standpoint of, I have to wash myself, mm -hmm. renew my mind with the word of God on mm -hmm. such a continual basis because there's all these things coming against the perfect yeah. will of God in yeah. our life. Yeah. Yeah. And so as Pastor Mark is preaching this, this is ultimate truth. Mm -hmm. And it is our goal. But just because you're not there doesn't mean that you're bad, evil, in sin, mm -hmm. or anything like that. So I just felt like there's somebody in the room anyway, yeah. or yeah. watching, that might have started feeling condemned. Mm -hmm. I have hardness of, no, I, I, I had hardness of heart on the way to church this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm just kind of quick at noticing it and fighting it. And so the, the cure for me was I'm driving down the road and I saw this little patch of flowers. And I went, Lord, thank you for showing that to me. Thank you that I have eyes that can see that. Lord, I love those colors. Thank you for creating that for me. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for the car I'm driving. Thank you for, and I just started being super thankful. Yes. Okay, yep. grabbing onto that. So yep. you yep. keep going on this line. Cool. Yep. It is the ultimate truth. It's yep. where we all need to strive for, mm -hmm. and we're all going there. And this battle it won't mm -hmm. end until Jesus comes or you're yep. in heaven with him. All right, yep. but this deal, you can win if you'll grab the attitude that yep. he's talking about yep. right now. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Sorry about that, but go ahead. That's okay. No, great. Um, I, I, want, I want to share this with you. I've been, I, I've, I've been studying healing for 30-some years. Right. And I've got past the, the so one, one of the reasons why people don't believe in healing because they, they deal with, is it God's will? Right. There's been wrong teaching that God is, wouldn't be God's will. God, has, God wants some people healed, but not all. And probably doesn't want me healed because I, I probably didn't deserve it for some reason. So, but I got past that. I got past the whole thing. So I, I knew that it was God's will. 
I knew that he healed for today. That's easy. I mean, we know he heals, and we know it's his will, and we know he wants to. But there's this one thing about, but it says, if you can believe, this is in Mark 9, Jesus said to the, to the I, I may go there today, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. This was the lie that I believed. I believed that I couldn't believe. Come on, think about that one. I believed the lie that I couldn't believe. Because Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. But I believed that I don't know if I can get there to the point where I believe. See, when you get to the point where you believe, you know things are taken care of when you ask God. John 14, 14 says this. Jesus said very simply, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything. In my name, I will do it. And I looked at that and thought, I like that verse. Can I believe it? Come on, I'm just being real with you. Okay. Because if I can't believe it, then I'm in unbelief. And I'm believing a lie that I can't believe it. And I've been on a journey to, 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 against that lie. So I can believe. But getting there to say I can believe is taking a lot of work and a lot of study and a lot of meditating in the Word and a lot of, of, of taking thoughts captive because they are coming against me. As I'm trying to put the Word in my mind, there's thoughts coming in my mind that I didn't know were even there before, but they're coming up because there's an attack and there's a battle in my mind. See, a lot of this unbelief does happen in your mind. Yeah, it does happen in your heart, but a lot of it's just happening in your mind because you don't have your mind renewed to think like Jesus. Okay, we talk about renewing the mind, but renewing the mind could be a matter of life and death for some people. Because when attacks come against your body, if you're not, remen- if you're not ready for that, and you don't think that you can believe, you never know what's going to happen. Come on. Yeah. All right, we need to get to the point where we know that God wants us to believe, and he's given us a measure of faith. Okay, Jesus said, Matthew 17, Disciples, I don't know if it was that one or not, but there's one place that the disciples said, yeah, increase our faith. I don't think it's Matthew 17. Matthew 17 talks about, they, yeah, Matthew 17 is when they said to Jesus when, okay, so there's a young boy. I'm not, I am going to tell you this story. This is Mark 9 and Matthew 17. There was a young boy. Why don't I just go there because I got that in my notes. Someplace, someplace in here. Okay, I'm going already to page four. We're getting done quicker than I thought. Okay, <laughs> I'm already down here. Let's, I'm going to read this in Mark 9 first, and then I'm going to read it, uh, part of it in Matthew 17, because it's the same story, but there's different things that each writer writes that if you put them together, it's, it's a whole lot better teaching. Okay, so Mark 9 uh, says this, and then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, talking to Jesus, I brought, you, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Come on, look at this. They could not cast it out at that time. Understand, the disciples had cast out a lot of demons yes. before this. Yeah. That tells me this. Just because you had success before doesn't mean you're going to have success today. Right. Because every battle could be different. Right. So they've had success before, and maybe they got lax because they had success before. That, something that when we have some successes, we kind of sit back and think, oh man, I got this down. Until all of a sudden you come up with something else and then, oh wait. So the disciples ran into that. They could not. He answered him. Jesus said to him, oh faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Does it sound like Jesus is just a little bit frustrated with his disciples? Maybe. Do you think he gets just a little bit frustrated with us for the same reason? Okay. Okay. I'm just not even going to answer that. Okay, he's good. Bring, to, bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell to the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Sounds like the demon is just trying to throw a little bit of fear in there, a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? You know? Okay, so verse 21. So he asked the father. It sounds like Jesus wasn't even phased one moment. It's kind of like, has he always been like that? You know? No big deal. Yeah, what's he say? He asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? He said, hey, from childhood. And often he has thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But 
If you can do anything, I like what he said there, if you can, that's not the way to approach Jesus, really. <laughs> okay, Jesus, if you can do something. Okay, but that's what the man did. That's what the father did. He didn't have, as pastor said, he didn't have an evil heart, but he had something going on in his mind that was saying, hey, if you can do anything, have compassion and help us. Jesus said, turn it right around. If you can, believe. Jesus was asked if you can do anything, and you say, wait, it's not a matter of if I can do, it's a matter of if you can believe. All things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Sounds like the two were battling for, see what happened? There was belief battling with unbelief in the mind. How do you overcome that? By the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. you got to have the Word of God right there in the forefront of your mind. Otherwise, your mind goes to experience. That's what this guy had the problem with. I can believe, help my unbelief, because I just experienced your disciples coming to right now, and it didn't work. You know something? If you pray for somebody and you're not ready to deal with it, you could, help, you could hurt their faith. Oh, yeah. Okay which means you better be prayed up and ready to go. This is what he said here. Okay, so, Lord, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him, enter him no more. The spirit cried out, convulsed him, came out. Again, the spirit trying to act, you know, act out. There you go. And he became one as one dead, and so that many said he was dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he rose and, and went. This is interesting. And when he had come to the house. So Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, he rose. The boy is healed completely, which tells me this. When the disciples didn't cast him out, there could have been the thought, maybe it wasn't God's will because it didn't happen. How many of you have been there when you've prayed and it didn't happen? You thought, well, maybe it isn't God's will when it comes to healing. That's the lie of the devil. Okay, this young boy, the disciples failed. They could have gone there because of their experience, but the experience was not the truth. Come on. Your experiences are not the truth. The only truth is the Word of God, right? Okay, so that's what he, okay, so go on. When you come into this house, Okay, so Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up. So the truth was, God wanted him healed. There was power to heal. It could happen, but it's going to take belief. And when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately. So this is a good thing. When you fail at something, the best thing to do is just to go to God, not in shame, but just to ask him, what did I do wrong? Because I believe this should have worked. That's what the disciples said. Why could we not cast him out? We did it before. It's always happened. And he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing, by prayer and fasting. Now I want to read you Matthew 17 because Jesus, he writes a little bit more on that, that response. Matthew 17, 19, when the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, because of your unbelief. For... Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. How much will be impossible? Nothing will be impossible if you can believe. That's what Jesus said before. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Again, what's the problem with not getting results? Unbelief. How do you deal with unbelief? You go to the Word And you come to the point where the word is so strong that to not believe in healing is impossible because I can't go anywhere else but believe because the evidence in the word of God is so strong that that healing is for today. So Jesus said, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting, which means we know from this scripture, he wasn't talking about this happens to be an extra powerful demon that you got to pray and fast to get this one out. No, he said the reason why it didn't come out was because of unbelief. So this one comes out because you've got to deal with the unbelief because you don't need a whole lot of faith. He said you only have to have faith as a mustard seed, which isn't that big. It only takes a little bit. But, and God gives you the faith. Understand this. God gives you the faith. You just need to activate the faith that you have through the Word of God. And then what you ask will happen. So 
that, go, that goes with healing or anything in your life. You can get it. Whatever you ask in my name, Jesus said, John 14, 14, I will do it. And that is about as plain and clear. You can't read that without knowing exactly what he means. <laughs> it's going to happen, but you need to have the faith to believe. So there you go. So unbelief. Jesus dealt with unbelief everywhere in the situation with the disciples and with the Father, yet the young boy got healed, okay, because there is faith there in Jesus' part and in the Father's part. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. So you can go there, okay, when you're dealing with unbelief. God will help you. Okay? He will help you through this. You need to look to him. And so, anyway, go on there. That's that story. So, um, I'm trying to think of where I want to go from here, Pastor. You got something? Yeah, go. Yep. Awesome. As you were, as you were talking about that, you know, um, he gives you faith, Romans tells us. You yep. know, he gives us a measure of faith. We have faith. That part was given to us, Okay. And he says, to get, deal with the unbelief, that's our part. So to increase my understanding of what God has given to me, I get into the word. Therefore, it says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so I learned the kingdom ways. I learned his provision through the word of God. Now, the doubt is my control. The Lord didn't give me doubt. Doubt is from the influences of this world, influences of Satan, influences of just my own cognitive uh, um, disciplines or lack of disciplines, okay? And so I must control the influences. Mm -hmm. When I start to control the influences that come into my life, then doubt has a small place in my heart because I can control that. There's a lot of TV programs you need to shut off when it gets to a certain point. It does something. It starts to affect your heart. starts to put doubt inside of you. The books that you read, the amount of news that you watch, can I tell you, you are being manipulated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This may be news mm -hmm. to you. <laughs> if you're watching the news, you are being manipulated to a viewpoint. Yep. And it's kind of difficult to find the truth. You have to go to more than one source to actually find out what's going on. Okay? And so be cautious of this. And I was talking to somebody mm -hmm. who's uh, rather wealthy, and uh, it was kind of... Funny, and we were talking with uh, her, and I was like, so w with what's happening in the world, the economy, and all this other kind of stuff, she looks at me, she goes, I don't believe in lack. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the world is doing. I'm following the Lord. Mm -hmm. Of course, I took that as a major slap in my face, and I went, yes, ma'am, mm -hmm. amen. <laughs> and here I am trying to figure it out. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so he gives us a measure of faith, needs yep. mustard seed size. Yep. And yep. so what I need to do is get my doubt and unbelief smaller yep. than a mustard seed. There you go. Yep. And then faith will dominate. Exactly. Yep. Amen. And faith is like a seed. And understand when you plant a seed, mm -hmm. you plant a seed with all belief that when that seed germinates, when it comes up, there's going to be a harvest. Yes. Does it happen immediately? No. No. But you know when you put it in there, that you're going, to have a, you're going to have fruit down the road. Yes. That's what faith is. That's what, to me, that's what mustard seed faith is. Is you're planting a seed that you know. When you pray, Mark, Mark 11, 20, when you pray, Mark 11, 24 says. Yeah. Whoever should say unto this mountain, be removed. Okay, yep, no, come on. Okay. Whoever should say unto this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says will, will be come. done. He'll have whatever he says. Then it goes yep. on and it says, therefore, whenever you stand praying, yep. believe that you receive it, and you'll have it. So Ex prayer cannot start until you believe. Exactly. This type of prayer. Yes. The prayer to receive something from the Lord, yep. you must do your homework. Exactly. You must remove the doubt. Yep. Then the power is there to go, I petition heaven for this provision. Exactly. And then it will be done. Your believing is totally taken care of. And then you, it doesn't matter if it manifests instantly. You know and you know you know it's yep. already taken care of yep. no matter what. You don't need faith when you see it. Yeah. Faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. sight. You, don't need to, you don't need to believe. When, if you're saying, I'll believe it when I see it, that's not faith at all. Faith is when you believe it when you don't see it. Yes. Okay, and that's what is when you, when you put a seed in the ground, you're believing that that thing's coming up. Yes. And it's going to grow. Yes. 
Okay, if you put that seed in the ground today and you look tomorrow, you think, man, I have nothing. I, I doubt that it's even working. Right. That's what we do even with, with healing. We pray, and, and, and because you don't see it immediately, you think you didn't get it. But you need to believe when you pray. Yes, Not down the road, pray. You need to believe today yes. when you pray, yes. and then you will have whatever you say. Amen. That is the key. Okay? When you pray, the healing power of God starts, because when you pray for it, it starts flowing through your body, making a change immediately, just like when Jesus cursed the, the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree, and the next day they came by, and it was withered. And Peter looked at it and said, hey, it actually worked. <laughs> okay, when he cursed it, it didn't all of a sudden curse it, and all of a sudden the leaves drooped. And it didn't happen that day. It happened the, day, the next day. But did the, the, the death start when Jesus spoke it? Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what faith does. It believes when you pray that you have what you pray. And you have to stay right there knowing. And basically, like, faith is just believing that God is going to fulfill his word. That's what it is. Belief stands on the word of God and not on any circumstances. I don't care what you're dealing with. You don't look at the circumstances. You look at the word of God. And that has to be the standard and nothing else. Yep. Yes. There. Done. Done. Good. This is a good message. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want, this is the deal. We need to get there. Yeah. Not just on the area of healing, but on anything that God has put on your heart. Yes. That you need to believe. Yes. That you receive yes. when you pray. Yes. And you will have it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Pastor, why don't you close this? This is good. Whatever. I I'm going to go sit down. So good. And I want to encourage you guys. I know everything. That, I can quote almost every scripture that he used. I'm familiar with every yeah. scripture that he used. I, him and I have talked about this. I've preached almost everything that he has just mm -hmm. said. I have three pages of notes. Mm -hmm. I have, Colleen's got two or three pages of notes. You know why? When something's alive to you, it's never old. But if it's old to you, it's not alive. I, I, am, I am eating this up. You know what? I know if I didn't write this down, I wouldn't be able tonight meditate on this because I wouldn't remember everything that was said. I wouldn't have those little stars by my notes going, mm, man, this, this I got to dig into deeper. Why? Because even though I can preach all this and all this other kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm getting a recreative miracle in my knee. Why? Because he's already paid for it. And so I'm in that fight of that miraculous recreation. And it's cool because Ken's my workout partner, and I'm sitting here, I'm going, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And he's preaching to me, you know, and all this other kind of stuff, and I'm doing everything that I shouldn't be able to do. And it's getting stronger, it's getting better, and it's just like, hey, no pain, awesome. I mean, it's like, yes, whatever. Why? I just want you to get this, absolute truth, is absolute truth. It is who Jesus is. He's not going to change. It is what the kingdom provided. That is not going to change. But you and I are in a battle of getting there. And just because you don't get there or you're not there yet does not mean that you're not loved, you're not valuable, and you're not precious. It just means you know where you're at in the journey. That's it. You know where you're at. And so once you know where you're at, you just go forward. And it's a beautiful thing. Some would ask, but what about medicine and doctors? I'm all for medicine and doctors. I think they're fighting the exact same thing. And you know what? It's a lot easier to believe God if you're not in pain while you're believing. But I would always put my trust and faith in God first. And I wouldn't take the medicine without trusting the word of God and saying, hey, this is a way that man figured out how to work with your design. And so I'm cooperating with that. But my ultimate truth is this. You're my creator. You might be even my recreator. <laughs> You're my Lord. And so my ultimate trust is in you. Amen. Let's pray. If you're listening to me here in this room or watching on TV and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says, Jesus said this, you must be born again. That's Jesus himself. 
Nicodemus says, what do you mean? Can I enter a second time into my mother's womb and be born? He says, no, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. And he was talking about the spirit man must be born into life, must be born into the family of God. And the way that happens is we have to recognize that sin separates us from God. We've all sinned. You and I sinned. You know what I mean? I was in sin on the way to church this morning because I had unbelief and I had to deal with it. And I knew it and I recognized it. It's sin because it's outside of the perfect will of God. That's what sin is. The penalty of sin is death. But once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he paid the penalty of that death for us. And now we can go on the journey of life once we accept him. I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me, everyone. If you mean this from the, if you accept this and you mean this from the bottom of your heart, watching online, watching in, or right in this room, you pray this. This is the, this is the place of miracle. It's not the prayer we're praying. It's are you willing to give your heart to Christ? Willing to give your life to Christ? And I'm just gonna help you with the prayer. Let's all pray out loud and say, dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. And I believe he died on the cross. Pay the price for my sin. And I've sinned. And I need to be forgiven. So Jesus, I surrender to you. I choose you today. To live for you. To live for your kingdom. And I receive from you right now. Forgiveness of all my sins. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for accepting me. And I ask that you teach me to live this life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Do we have the website set up yet for the new believers, or do I have to do 8141? Okay. If you did this for the very first time, in this room, you can fill out the Connect card that's in front of you and and there's a seat in front of you and put your information on there. We'll send you a link by which you're going to get teachings that are going to help you to understand how to start this walk with the Lord right away here and do it successfully. If you're watching online, text to 81411, the words got saved. 81411, got saved, but make it one word. And we'll send you a link to get that same teaching. Amen. Uh, come on, Jacob, you got some uh, announcements to share with us and some Awesome. He brought me a gift. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jacob. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, you know, give Pastor, Paul, Pastor Mark a round of a hand. My bad. He did an amazing job. He really did. Awesome. Um, so I know Pastor just went off. If, you're, if you just got saved, um, you could text the eight one more. Yeah, that number. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Also, we have a card. We would love for you to fill out this card. And then you can take this card and you can go to the connections desk. And this is where this gift comes in. We have a gift for you that we'd love to give to you guys for coming out. Is that for first-time visitors or salvation? Oh, you know what? I did say that for salvations, didn't I? First-time visitors. My apologies. Thank you for catching that. So if you're a first-time visitor, you can fill the card out, go back to the connections desk, and then we'll give you the, the gift. Um, I have a couple announcements for you guys. Um, this Tuesday, we have Women's Sisterhood, Wolven Sisterhood, and it starts at, doors open at 645, and if you don't know about coming out, come out. If you're, if you're a little hesitant, come out. Trust me, you'll love it. And this is for ladies only, just so I can make sure you know that. It's for ladies only, and if you're wondering about going, go. You'll love it. You won't, you won't regret it. Um, next, serve, next Sunday, we have graduations at 11 a.m., that is second service, and if you can bring your kids when they graduate, we want you to be able to pray over them and release them into the kingdom. Release them into the kingdom. Release them into the world. My bad. Um, we got to have jokes around here, right? Someone has to laugh. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, next, June 15th, is our, we have, we're going to be wrapping up our prayer sermon for, on Wednesday nights. And to, to launch this off, to be done with it, we're actually the new direction classes we have that all your kids have been learning. Um, they want to do a talent show. And I'm telling you, those kids, you're going to love it. We have the jitsu, and their kids, they're going to be slamming. I'm kidding. They're not going to do that, but they're going to show you what they <laughs> They'll show you what they can learn. You know, we kids are learning to sing. They're learning to play instruments, uh, painting. You're going you're gonna to love to see what your kids have learned. All right? 
And just so you guys know, there will be cafe open on that service as well, all right? That is June 15th, just so you know. It's Wednesday, and we'd love to see you out here. And if you need prayer for anything, spirit, soul, or body, we want you to come on forward so we can pray with you and believe with you, okay? All right, awesome. You guys are amazing and blessed. Get out of here.